Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today on the bench we have a Yaesu FT991 HF VHF UHF transceiver. And what we're going to do is we're going to expand the frequency or the transmit coverage of this particular radio, commonly knows, known as a Mars mod. Now, I value your time, so I don't show you guys removing all the covers, but needless to say, all the covers have to come off of the radio. And this is what you're going to be presented with after you do that. Now what you need to do is you need to remove the control head. What we need to work with here is, is underneath this cover here. So we're going to have to pull our control head off. So if you've pulled it apart this far, just go ahead and lift these tabs here. And the control head will come apart like that. So once you remove the control head like that this is what you're going to be presented with you have a couple of ribbon cables here you have this cable and then you have this small ground lead here now we can go ahead and disconnect the ground lead by removing this screw because this cover that's right here has got to come off anyway and is also the rubber gasket I don't like to disturb the ribbon cables for something like this this should be a quick in and out I mean all we're doing is is we're basically creating a solder bridge or closing one jumper slot in this particular radio in order to accomplish our goal today. So the first screw we're going to get out of the way is the one that's holding the ground lead between the control head and the chassis here. Now by removing this one ground lead now we can just go ahead and lift this ground connection out of the way here and that gives us a little more room to work with. Now we'll go ahead and remove the rest of the screws around the perimeter of this lid. And this should give you a little better view of that. It's important that once you remove these screws that you gather them and place them in some kind of a container. It's very easy to lose screws on the workbench. Now we have this one screw at the base we also need to remove and then we've pretty much have removed all of our screws to access the control board where we need to perform our modification. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the gasket off and we're going to kind of stack that up here. I know it looks like a big mess right now but there is a method to the madness. Now once we've done that, we can go ahead and lift this cover and get it out of our way in order to get room to get to our jumpers. Now to make our modification, you can see this row of jumpers here. And we need to close jumper number three, which is right here. Now unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to solder all this and film it at the same time but we'll go ahead and show you the modification after it's complete before we button this up and test it we've completed our modification and we've applied a solder bridge and closed this jumper in this location right here well let's put this back together and see if it works or if we broke the radio so go ahead and just uh, orient your cover and it'll kind of snap in place to retain itself and then go ahead and put in your perimeter screws. Now that we've now that we've accomplished that task, we're going to go ahead and put our gasket back on. The only screw we haven't placed back on is the one for our ground wire because we still want this space that having that detached gives us to in order to put the gasket back on. Now we'll go ahead and reattach our ground wire. Now slip your control head back in place, paying attention to the orientation of the ribbon cables. Just like that. Now at this time I'm going to go ahead and put the covers back on. Starting with the top first.
So now let's reset the radio and see if our modification was successful and if our patient survived the procedure. To execute a reset sequence with this particular radio, you depress the fast and lock at the same time, which are these two keys here, while turning the power on. When it comes on, there we go. Looks good. Well, let's see if our modification was successful. We'll pick somewhere out of band and we selected a digital mode. I forgot these did digital. So let's go ahead and transmit. Very good. Looks good. One thing I do want to mention is that this modification does not expand the VHF and UHF transmit ranges at all. You can see right here that we're transmit inhibited in VHF. And at UHF. Well, I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Calm. Still next time.